boys and girls, all my loved um, patrons um, and supporters, thank you for being so loyal. Here we are again, a little later, to talk about and to defend my beloved late aunt Nadine. Buried, alas, against her wishes, in Piss Hill, Estona. I am currently applying to her cousin, and I will pay for her, Nadine, Stoner Peppers, to be reburied in the family tomb that she had wanted at Tambridge, sorry, not at Piss Hill. Stoner. Here we are in my grandmother's time at Stoner Park, approximately 1928 I would say, very beautiful, before my late mother stripped off all the ivy and cut down all the trees. And then we go to Darling Nadine, much maligned, much bullied, a dear, sweet, good, kind, gentle lady and her amazing trip as I will show you 1939 onwards to Nairobi to marry my very dear uncle of the Camel Hall. came from, as you can see, the New York Times, February the 3rd, 1941. Thus, to lead you down more interesting tracks even, she could not sign a writ at the House of Lords in 1976, as I will show. And then again, London lies in bed. Here is a photograph taken by myself with my paternal grandmother, Mildred, Lady Camelois, and my aunt to the left, Nadine Stoner Peppers, in Newport, Rhode Island, in the autumn of 1961. But she was, as always, so divinely kind to me, caring of me. I wish I had understood better. I do now, make friends. my mother, the black marketeer and smuggler. Um, in 1943, I think, 43, very good stage setting. I was extremely frightened, uh, though I adored Mama with her bedazzling diamonds, very naughty painting. Now, on the back of that, a little prematurely, comes a declaration that my late beloved, terrified, intimidated, bullied aunt was forced to sign, forced to compose, in May 1976. She, and was, um, thus issued as a writ at the House of Lords. Nadine could not have signed this or composed it because she was away in Nairobi, Newport and various other places, even from the time of my own birth, April 19, 1939. This is actually Then we have Oh. 
I appealed, as I continue to appeal, to have the barony of Rick passed to me as a, the legitimate claimant of the blood. And this was the letter I received. Oops. Proving that I was, as I am, still entitled. So, okay, there is no statute of limitation in the English law. Thereafter, can I find for you? Well, in my appeal, because this is interwoven with the canon law, the Roman Catholic Church, which is an international law, the false decree of my, of the nullity of my marriage, which declared that I am insane. It took me many years to find this, which is still under appeal in Rome, where I have very sympathetic support. No support in London, of course. And here is the letter of a Roman avocado of law, a married man, who shows that he has discovered that this nullity has been declared falsely. And I continue to appeal the same. And then we have entertain you. Because I have been told forcibly by my remaining brother and by my cousin, Captain Nicholas Brown of the American Navy, retired, that I must, must sell the house in which I live, which doesn't belong to me. I have had to get a character reference to send to character house. generous, rather humiliating for me. And then finally, the finale, I think my finale is um, a recent article from the London Sunday Times, the 20th of May of this year, of a very great friend of my mother, and I think he's related, another Roman Catholic, um, William Forbes Semple, who became the 19th Lord Semple in 19... Here we have the heading and the article, whereby Churchill had to ignore him because it suited him for um, the bringing in of the Americans at the time of Pearl Harbor. And it's a very intricate, rather gruesome story, quite fascinating. And the late Lord Semple, whom I remember well, shooting parties at Stone Park, um, was the official godfather to my late tragic murdered brother, Bobby. So I'm bringing you up to date. I don't think I'm making much progress, but I'm still trying. I won't give in. Okay, darlings, love you all. Here I am, loving you all, in an elegant, best elegant part of London. Hello, Crescent, where Cecil B. had a very beautiful house. Slight contrast to a cottage full of wood. You're all my guests. 